In this video, what I want to do is walk you through the process that can be used to analyze and sketch a rational function. And I want to do that with a function that's sufficiently complex enough that you'll see some pretty interesting stuff happening. So let's take a look at the following example. We have f of x equals 2x squared minus 7x minus 4 over 2x squared plus 5x plus 2. And what I'm going to do with this function is I'm going to analyze it for a few key pieces of information. Namely, I'm interested in whether there are any holes vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, any x-intercepts, and whether there's a y-intercept. And in order to gain that information, what I have to do first is look at this rational function, recognize that I have a quadratic in standard form in the numerator, as well as in the denominator, and make a few decisions about how to simplify this rational expression so that I can get a better idea of what's going on. And in order to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the numerator of this rational function, and what I want to do is I want to take that quadratic expression and I want to factor it. Now, I won't review trinomial factoring just to keep it brief, but I will link a video here for you to check out because I have my own pretty zany factoring process that I like to use. Suffice it to say that this trinomial factors into x minus 4 times 2x plus 1. So what I'm going to do is replace the numerator with my new factored expression. And I'm going to take that denominator, which is also a quadratic expression, and I'm going to apply trinomial factoring to rewrite that expression in factored form. And again, picking your favorite factoring strategy will result in x plus 2 times 2x plus 1. So I can rewrite the denominator of my rational function using my new factored form here. At this point, I want to just pause and take a look at what my rational function has turned into. With a keen sense of observation, you'll see that the numerator and the denominator both contain a 2x plus 1 binomial. Because there's multiplication happening in between the 2x plus 1 binomial and the other binomial in both the numerator and the denominator, what I can do is effectively cancel out that 2x plus 1. Remember, 2x plus 1 divided by 2x plus 1 is 1. And in math, we don't like to write 1 unless we have to. And that's where this canceling happens. 2x plus 1 divided by 2x plus 1. Those binomials cancel out and we're left with just x minus 4 over x plus 2, which is a much simpler rational function than the one originally provided in the example. So really all we've done at this point is taken a rather complex looking rational function, simplified it into a more basic rational function, and that's going to make it easier for us to analyze the behavior of this rational function. And we're going to do that by looking at a few key pieces of information. Now before we cancel that 2x plus 1 binomial, it may have seemed to you that there may have been a vertical asymptote at negative a half. If I sub negative a half into 2x plus 1, I would get 0. And when we have 0 in the denominator of a rational function, we have a vertical asymptote. But because we canceled that 2x plus 1 out, you actually have a hole at x equals negative a half. And we'll see that when we go to actually sketch this rational function. You can, of course, determine the y value for the hole just by taking negative a half and substituting it back into the simplified form of the rational function. And so as a result, we have a hole at negative a half, negative 3. I briefly mentioned vertical asymptotes, and we do still have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. If you take a look at the simplified form of a rational function, you'll see that it has x plus 2 in the denominator. Placing negative 2 in for x would result in 0 there, and as such we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. There's a long complex explanation for how you determine the equation of a horizontal asymptote. I won't go into detail here, but remember for horizontal asymptotes we're looking at what happens to the rational function as x gets really really big in both the positive and negative directions. Because the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator for this rational function, what that means is that this rational function has a horizontal asymptote at the ratio of the leading coefficients. Because there's imaginary 1 in front of our x in the numerator and in the denominator, we say that we have a horizontal asymptote at 1 over 1, which of course simplifies to 1. So y equals 1 is the equation of our horizontal asymptote. Our x-intercept can of course be found by letting the function equal 0 and solving for x. To make things simple, you can just let the numerator equal 0. Placing 4 in the numerator would result in 0, making our x-intercept at 4 comma 0. Subbing 0 in for x will provide us with the coordinates of the y-intercept, and in this case that is 0, negative 2. So next I'm going to bring in a grid, and what I want to do is just take all this key information and just throw it up on this graph. I'll start with the hole because that's what I did first. Remember when we draw holes, we draw a circle that's not filled in. So I'm going to place that at negative half, negative three. Remember that we indicate vertical asymptotes with a vertical dotted line, and that's passing through x equals negative two. The horizontal asymptote is a horizontal dotted line, and that passes through y equals one. And lastly, throwing up our x and our y-intercept onto our graph, 
leaves us with all of the information we gained from our analysis put on our sketch so far. In the bottom right quadrant of my graph, you can see that I've got a pretty clear trend. I've got three points. One of them is a hole. But so what I'm going to do is just connect those three points with a nice smooth curve. This is not necessarily a super accurate sketch. And that's kind of the way things tend to be with these rational functions. You could, of course, sub in a few points to get a more accurate curve. But I'm just going to use these three points just to generally sketch the curve in this bottom quadrant of the graph. These arrows should make sense. As I approach that vertical asymptote, I'm heading down towards negative infinity. If I sub in numbers getting closer to negative 2, I'm going to get bigger and bigger and bigger in the negative direction. And if I sub in x values that are very, very big, the rational function will start to approach 1. Of course, the question remains, what does the rest of this graph look like? And so what I usually do is take points and I just sub them into the rational function. I'm going to pick on negative 4, for example. If I sub in negative 4, you'll see that you get 4. So I can plot a point right up there. And you can do this with any number of points until you're satisfied with the accuracy of your sketch. Usually two or three is enough to get a kind of general feel for what the rational function is going to look like. And of course, connecting those with a nice smooth curve would result in something like this. You can see I'm kind of off in my grid here, but I really wanted to show you that bottom right quadrant, which is where all of the kind of neat information happens that helps us analyze this rational function. So there you have it, a nice sketch for this example. What I encourage you to do is just check your answer using Desmos. And so I'll pop over to Desmos right now. And you can see I've already graphed the original function here in red. And if I toggle on the factored form in, shown in blue here, you can see that that's equivalent to the red function, right? There's no change there. And lastly, if I toggle on the simplified expression, which appears in orange, you can see all three of those forms are equivalent. If I plot that point I showed you at negative 4 and 4, you can see that it does in fact fall on that rational function. And of course, our x-intercept is at 4, 0. Our y-intercept is at 0, negative 2. And if I approach negative half, what you're going to see is that the graphing calculator tells me my function is undefined there. And that should make sense because what I'm looking at is the original function, and I know that there's a hole at x equals negative a half, as that's what turned up in my analysis. So there you have it, an analysis and a walkthrough of how to sketch a more complex rational function with a whole vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote, and the x and y intercepts.